Welcome to another episode of Perspectives. I'm here with uh, Chase yeah. and Grayson himself. We're back at it again. Um, today, we kind of just want to talk more about missions or programs that we have going on, which includes missions and um, different things that we have going on. Let me just go through it real quick, um, and then we'll break it down even more just to kind of help you guys understand the different programs that we, as an organization, want to um, have that really relate to our mission statement and how we want to proceed about each one. Um, so we have mission trips, you know, whether that's partnerships, uh, partner trips, or just individual trips, different scholarship programs, um, local serve events, cultural events, podcasts, and also online creative content. And so we really want to just break these down as a way to really help everyone understand what each each one yeah. <laughs> kind of really represents. So I don't know. I guess we can start with the mission trip since I brought that up originally. Um, what, what does that look like for you guys, the mission trip? Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, I think uh, that's obviously like the biggest part of the organization. And yeah. that's the thing that we believe um, – creates the most change like in, in the people that we're trying to to serve um, both like the participants on mission trips but as well like the actual people that we're serving in the community and so um, the the majority of like our I would say like our funds as an organization our time as an organization is going to be spent really thinking about these trips and how they can be uh, just the most effective and how we can provide the best experience for those trips um, and, and going off of that um, with with our mission being to, to provide a more complete and unified mission trip experience in the long term um, mm -hmm. really like the two types of trips that that you had outlined Joshua like our partnership trips and then our independent trips yeah both are are big um, components of being able to to, to strive towards that long-term mission um, and just to describe a little bit of the difference between them the independent trips is just specifically where us as perspectives would go and partner with our with our foreign international partners um, to, to help them in their long term calling in, in that country and in that area um, and being able um, to, to go there, serve them and really just try to provide the best experience for these uh, participants with no kind of no strings attached, right. uh, nothing that's really affiliated, you know, here in the U.S. And so really being able to try, you know, different like different things with these trips, yeah. uh, being able to um, to have different uh, components of it, whether it's how we're serving the people, whether it's different activities we're having those participants do um, and, and really be able to, to to test things a little bit. Um, but then as well with the with the partnership trips. That's really where where the unity and the striving towards unity comes right. in, comes into play. Being able to partner with with churches like Gateway mm -hmm. or uh, or with other organizations um, that that host missions as well. Being able to partner with them, uh, whether it's you know trips that technically we're hosting but partnering with these organizations, or technically they're hosting hosting but we're partnering with them. But something to really build those relationships with those organizations, something that uh, gives us an opportunity to like learn from those organizations, um, and being able to to apply those to our trips. Um, and and yeah, I don't think enough could be said like about the mission trips yeah. part. Absolutely. Yeah, I think for um, no, I agree. I agree. I think, like you said, just being able to partner with people, what they have going on already. Um, I think such a great way to 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 really be able to uh, serve others, you know, just kind of coming along and, you know, you don't have to start from scratch. There's already people who've implemented, they've been in these cities, yeah. they're already serving these people. So just being able to be a part of that, I think that's great. Yeah. Yeah. What about you, Grayson? Um, yeah. So as far as just, you know, partnering, you know, going back to what you're saying, partnering with other uh, organizations, different churches, and going abroad and um, going down. I know we just recently took a trip down to Costa Rica, yeah. and um, that was a, from what you were telling us, Chase, that it was a really good time and yeah. um, that y'all have a lot of good things going on down there that we can start bringing people with us and implementing our mission and helping to serve others. 
that sort of thing. Yeah. Yeah. And that was a really cool opportunity because that, that was like a partnership trip um, between us and, and First Methodist Grapevine. And that was that was my fifth time, no, fourth time down there. And being able to, to go there year after year, seeing how um, how everything is just continuing to get better down yeah. there, how God's moving down there is amazing. Um, and just kind of in short, what we do down there, we, we serve at this uh, Methodist Children's Home down there, doing a mix of construction work on their property, um, as well being able to work with the kids, um, being able to you know, teach them English and do like vacation Bible school activities, different things like that. Um, and then as well, go out through, go to different churches like in the city and be, be able to host like different events there and help them in different ways. And, and it's been so cool because like the construction workers that we work with are the same year after year. Um, some of the kids who are still there have been there year after year. And right. so um, them them remembering you um, is is awesome because you know that yeah it's a cool experience yeah. getting to you kind of reconnect with that connection that you already had and just you know getting to see how their lives have grown since the last time you saw them and exactly. kind of where they're at now and then you coming back they already have that connection so that's always yeah good for sure exactly and it's yeah, it's amazing um, and it's very encouraging to see because um, I feel like at least for me, like time flies by really quickly, like between those trips. <laughs> it does <laughs> for all really of us. Does, yeah. <laughs> and, and so whenever you kind of feel like here, like, oh, a lot has happened, but it's been so quick. Like it's, it's still encouraging to see how much has happened in, like in their lives um, to really remind me of how much, um, how much they've taken advantage of the time and, and how much God can do in a seemingly like short amount of time. Um, but yeah, so that trip was awesome and, and was a great example of a partnership trip mm-hmm. because now we're talking with some of the people down there for us as perspectives to go down there next year um, and be able to give them another group to serve I down there. I think there's a, I was speaking with my dad. Uh, my dad runs a children's home down in South Texas called the South Texas Children's Home. And uh, they're actually planning a trip to Greece that mm. that'll be wow. next, I guess, next year. Uh, okay. My mom was telling me about that. So that might be something that we could look into and really, you know, see maybe we could partner up with them on that trip. Exactly. That would be yeah. a really cool one. Yeah. And I mean, with us mainly trying to provide these experiences towards young adults, I think it may be a good opportunity to like partner with them in terms of being able to provide like the children at the children's home an opportunity to spend a week with with someone who's just a little bit older than them yeah, but still for sure for still sure. still is able to relate to them still knows some of like the little pop culture references yeah, or that always helps <laughs> yeah little things like that and yeah. so that may that like that's a, that's a perfect example of like an awesome opportunity um where like something that uh, that we have um like a skill set or a characteristic that we have um, can really pair well with a characteristic of another organization. And yeah, so, absolutely. Yeah. No, I, I mean, I think that's that's great because I, I have a friend who just, she just got back from Kenya maybe this past weekend or something. And wow, that's a long way. Yeah, yeah <laughs> it really was. Because uh, she was there for a mission way. trip for a couple of days. Um, and just talk, being able to talk to her as you know, she was, you know, in the heat of everything. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I would have to wait until she was back at the hotel where she had internet and all that. Um, but just with technology nowadays, you know, people being able to keep in contact with someone overseas, you know, in the mission field, building something and just, because uh, I had her, I was like, hey, just send me pictures every day. I just want to see what you're doing. Um, just seeing how she was able to impact the lives of those that she was around. Yeah. Uh, you could see the smile on the kid's face, kind of like you mentioned. Building those partnerships. Uh, she might not be able to go back, but you've been able to go back to Peru five times now. I mean, Costa that's Rica. Costa Rica, sorry. It's all good. <laughs> um, that's, that's, uh, that's, that's pretty crazy, you know, yeah. to, for those same workers to remember you, um, the kids to be able to remember you, that's something not a lot of people are able to do, you know, so I think that's yeah. that's really cool. Yeah, yeah. And, yeah and I'm excited because, like, if we do end up going down there, like, as perspectives next year as an independent trip, um, I've been able to see kind of, kind of a number of different things um, in in the structure of those trips that I've I've gone on. Um, that I would love to like improve on and yeah. that, that I think would really provide like a, like a better experience 
um, for the people who are going on the trip. And right. so I'll be really excited to, to kind of try that. And, um, and I know something that we like, uh, that we quickly wanted to, to cover was, um, you know, people may be asking, okay, so, you know, you're talking about these mission trips and, and everything like that. So what are, like, what are the, um, like, what, what are the focuses and kind of the, things that you're intentional about whenever you're going on your mission trips. And so we do have kind of three kind of broad components that we feel needs to be present in, in every mission trip, um, for it to be, for it to be effective. Um, and we'll just kind of go through each of these like one by one and kind of highlight them. So, uh, the, the first part of it is, is really being able to, to result in an improvement in the sustainability of the community yeah. or the culture where we're traveling to. Um, whether that's construction work, uh, whether that's like equipping like pastors down there so right. that they aren't rely like relying on groups, but I know that's something we definitely feel strongly about. Yeah, yeah, I think um, definitely being able to equip people to uh, continue the work that they're doing is 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 so pivotal, you know, because <laughs> most mission trip most of the time people are probably there for a week or two. Um, for sure. Yeah. So you're only there for a week or two and you're trying to maximize as much as you can, but you want to, you know, kind of like you mentioned, leave the people as with as much resource as you can give them, you know, while you're there, you know, and, and mission strip where you're able to, for example, uh, do construction. I think those ones are always so, so cool. Cause I think last time we were talking, you mentioned how it takes about a week to build, um, yeah, one of the houses. Yeah, like, that's that's crazy. The housing project that we're right. thinking about doing down there. That's that's crazy. You know, for it to just take a week. You know, to imagine being able to go with a group of however many people, and within a week you're able to, you know, maybe even build a house or something for a community of people. I think that's 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 awesome. Yeah, um, for sure, for sure. Yeah, and so the the second kind of component that we think needs to be present in a mission trip is. Um, God really being able to have just like an immediate spiritual impact when, when we're on the trip. Um, because if if we are there just, um, just providing, you know, the construction work or different things like that, but don't like, don't bring God's presence there. Um, and don't, don't encourage the people there. Like, like we're not giving them like the, the hope that they do need at the end of the day. Yeah. And so. Um, then the third one uh, would really be just kind of highlighting or preserving whenever we can, um, like the culture of the community that we are going to. Um, it's it's so easy for us, um, at least from what I've seen in the past, and it's a common criticism of like short term mission trips. Right. But it's so easy for us as Americans to to kind of go in there and think that we know exactly what these people need and and go in there with with answers rather than questions of you know how how can we serve you how can we help you and 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 learning how their community operates right um and not just trying to like americanize their and i think that's community. one of the cool things too especially about going overseas or going you know down just to different places around the world as you get to see all the different cultures and really get to experience and how you know outside of our bubble here in America <laughs> there's yeah. a lot of there's a lot of different uh, perspectives out there right. um, on you know whether spiritual or even just the way of life yeah. is mm-hmm. completely different um, well to some places are some places are more aligned like America but um, a lot of the countries that we really focus on uh, is very um, it's very different right. very it's something that us as just living here and growing up in America, we probably can never really understand until you go down there and see it firsthand. And exactly. I think that's one of the, the main things that we really want to do is help provide that avenue for students, kids uh, to go and, and, and see and, and really realize that, hey, you know, things are different from the way your normal life is. And that's also an opportunity for them to help give back to others who, you know, might not necessarily have everything that we have. Right. I think that's like a common thing that I've, from most people that have gone on mission trips, when they come back and you talk to them, it's always that just something, I never knew the world was like this. Yeah. Yeah. Kind of like you mentioned the American bubble. Yeah, you know, you're just like in your bubble every day. It's just, uh, you know, humbling and very... uh, 
it's a very neat opportunity to be able to go and see um, those just the way people are outside of our American bubble. Right. Yeah. And I think like I, I think I heard a, uh, I did hear a stat and hopefully I, I remember it right. Just talking like to this point where it was like us Americans were one of the the like the um, countries and the, and the nationalities that travel the least out, out of the world. Like mm. if, if I remember the stat correctly, it was something around like only 30 percent of Americans hold a valid passport. Wow. Oh, wow. To whereas yeah. where you go over to Europe, it's up where like above ninety percent. Everyone has, yeah. Yeah. Everyone has <laughs> a passport. <laughs> exactly, and then but still, then whenever you get over to like Asian countries, yeah, I mean it's still like uh, at least above fifty percent, mm-hmm. if not a, if not more than that. And wow. so, the fact that uh, like the combination of us having like ha- having a great country to live in um, and having um, you know affluence whether it's like financial um, or or a number of other areas and having all these comfortabilities, but combining that with the fact that we are often kind of bubbled into just our way of living. Yeah. We, we, it's difficult for us to be able to relate to other parts of the world and, and kind of understand how they're living and, and perhaps like how they are thriving in the way that they're living. Right. And I know like for you example in the Congo, like, like I know you were young whenever you lived over there, but like, like the stories that your family's been able to share has been like amazing yeah and and being able to like thrive in, in that culture mm-hmm. that you grew up in i mean there's so many cultural differences and we'll get to that even some more um but yeah i mean just to kind of highlight you know go back to what you're saying it's there's always little things that i pick up or notice that my friends might never even think about you know, to me, it's like, why do you guys do things like this? And to them, that's just the norm, you know. And so um, coming from a different country definitely gives me that, um, you know, that point of view. That's that's a little bit different than probably most of the kids my age that were raised here. Um, I mean, I know I was, I was still pretty young when I left there, but nine years spent there is still... Quite a, quite a bit of time. Yeah, you, know, you to can kind still of know. remember yeah. everything. <laughs> yeah, yeah, to still kind of know all that's going on. But but let me ask, so let's say um, I'm listening to us talk right now, and I'm hearing about, you know, being able to go on mission trips and experience all these different things. But as we all know, sometimes it's kind of hard to be able to afford mission trips. Exactly. I know I've, I probably shared this, but um, maybe 2012 or something, I was supposed to go yeah. on a mission trip with um, – Back when I was at Old Roberts, and I wasn't able to able to go because I couldn't raise the funds, and so I know for a lot of people that's that's something that stops them from being able to go. You know, Absolutely. maybe they feel like they don't have um, they don't have the resources to be able to go. So, yeah. how does someone in that position um, what 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 can we do? How do we help? You know, someone in that position. How do, how does that? Yeah, and so we had mentioned it, like with our with our scholarship program, that is something that we um, try to be really intentional about um, because it was it was a a thought that I had uh, it was a number of months ago now, but um, you know we would be like we'd be prideful and ignorant to think that we were the only ones God could do work through with like the money that we've been blessed with. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and having ha- having a generous spirit. Um, amongst like just our operations as an organization, um, uh, but as well like in our relationships with our partners, and so being able to um, show them that like our money is where our mouth is. Like we we tell these organizations we care about them, we want to partner with them, and so being able to sow like investments in them is something that like just proves that right um and and like being just being able to have a scholarship program in general whether it's people who are going on our trips or people that like we know through personal life who want to go on another organization's trip like being able to to help send the funds to that organization to partner the trip is something that's key for sure for sure absolutely um i kind of going back to what Josue was talking about uh on not being able to go on the mission trip (laughs) i had a similar thing happened like that when I was wanting to go to Africa a couple uh, I guess I was 13 or a while ago (laughs) so it was a long time ago but um but yeah so just you know really driving that scholarship program and really being able to help others 
be able to finance and afford that is one of our main goals here. Yeah. So. Yeah, because, I mean, I, I know I have a lot of friends. Because through social media, that's usually how people communicate that, hey, um, or they maybe just text you. Uh, yeah. But a lot of people will post on social media because you're able to reach more people. Yeah, Like, hey, I'm sure. going on a mission trip. Um, if you're able to donate anything. Uh, yeah. I mean, I always, I'm not going to say I always am able to donate, but I try to whenever I can. Um, but I think that it's great that we, um, like you said, putting our mouth um, money where our mouth ma- is. Money where. <laughs> hey, it's a difficult it, thing. Man. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, definitely being able to do that, um, whether it's through the organization or just even personally, I think that's. I mean, that helps people out. You know. Um, exactly. There's never like a, a small. I mean, I guess if you give a dollar, it might <laughs> not really affect as much. But you know, you know, at least it's about the heart. You know, not everybody. Is able to just donate ten thousand dollars. Yeah, you know, for so sure. um, we're not judging people <laughs> off of what they donate or anything like that. Exactly. Um, but yeah, no. Every so that's, little bit helps. No, it really <laughs> does. It really does. I and I'm sure that people appreciate it. Absolutely. Um, kind of just seeing that you're able to give. You you don't have to give. Um, yeah. Um, or a company or organization doesn't have to give, but whenever they do, uh, people definitely do appreciate those moments. So. Um, so yeah, that's just a little bit about the scholarship program. Yeah, um, and we also wanted to talk about the local uh, serve events that we do. Yeah, um, I know we we went to um, what, what was the name of the church we went to? There's so there's a couple churches that we've been able Fort to be Worth. connected with. Yeah, there's one called Church on the Slab or yeah. Church at the Slab. At the Slab, I believe. Yeah, I believe so. Yeah, uh, down in the Fort Worth area, um, and then as well we went over to um, it's called West End. Yeah. church that's over in the Dallas area mm-hmm. um, but yeah both of them it, it's it's really really cool to see like what those what those people are doing um, they're churches that are intended to be um, churches to, to serve homeless people right um, to be able to to give those people a church home um, and and the programs that they all have are awesome being able to have the service um, provide them with like meals afterwards being able to distribute clothes to them being able to pray with them. Um, being able to potentially like connect to them with people, right. um, and I, I'm pretty sure West End as well does um, does programs like like resume reviews and like and like different things like that to try to to try to get them up. But so it's been really cool um, being able to to focus on like local local events because that's that is like the end result I would say of of what we want from like our mission trips and mm-hmm. almost just like our pro- programs as a whole is for these experiences to result in a, in a change of perspective that can result in being able to have like one, one I, I think like a closer relationship with Jesus, but as well um, being able to be more involved in your community at home, um, being able to, um, to show like the love of Christ in, right. in, in your everyday life. Yeah. Um, because I mean, you don't have to go overseas to help <laughs> right. people. Exactly. <laughs> right. there, I mean, there's need even here, you know, our neighbor next door. Right. Exactly. Um, so that, that is one of the, the, you know, main goals of the local server events is to, you know, give back in your, to your community and, um, you know, your neighbors and people down the road who, you know, might not have the best situation going exactly. on. They need, they need some type of relief. Yeah, and that's what we just think that, um, and I would say we've seen from our experiences of traveling that the that what God does on those trips really encourages you and motivates you to get involved in your community, right. and God really uses that to to build up this passion in you for just for people in general, um, and from there, uh, being able to. Um, for us in terms of like a model of how to provide these programs to people Mm -hmm. trying to take advantage of like the momentum that these mission trips create in in Mm -hmm. the hearts of people yeah to then get them connected with with their community and get them connected with opportunities in their community yeah so i mean like the local server events kind of serve as like a starting point and an end point, you know, yeah. cause you, you can start out by serving with our group and going to these, you know, local server events that we have and then transition your way from there to going on to an international trip. And right. then when you come back, you can still go do the local server events to yeah. help kind of, uh, just, you know, kind of keep the torch going and, right. um, exactly. really continue the, the, 
the, the cycle of that and you know just exactly. kind of goes yeah. that Cause, goes in a cycle because <laughs> yeah because we just want to get them like connected to opportunities that like their gifts and their passions like almost match up with um because it's been really cool like we've been able to and, and we're willing to like partner with just like many different types of organizations yeah like habitat they, for humanity yeah. habitat yeah, for humanity that was, that was, that was cool. churches yeah. um like homeless events um one that was randomly mentioned by a friend at work was um, which I think would be kind of cool, but the the Dallas Zoo mm. actually hosts like little weekend trips to go down to mm. Padre Island to help with like the turtles down there. Mm. And oh. I'm just like that'd be like a really <laughs> random thing. <laughs> I was about to say that would be random. But yeah. Save be, the like, turtles, yeah. Yeah, that'd be Save still the turtles. so cool though. <laughs> yeah, it really would. I, I mean, it's just because uh, I mean I think that's just trying to have a servant's heart. Right. Just going out there trying to trying to make the world. Um, you know, a better place um, mm-hmm. and as close to heaven as, as we can make it. Um, and so, yeah, being able to just partner with all these different types of organizations to connect people with them is really cool. And and I think, like, if we didn't do this, um, we'd almost be, like, hypocritical because mm, if, if sure. we think that our calling is to, to change people's perspectives and to change, like, the culture here in the U.S., um, we couldn't just pursue that... Like that initiative and that calling just through like the indirect effects that like short-term mission trips mm-hmm. create. Um, the, the main way of doing that would be, in, would be to be involved here, like in our local communities um, when we are here, getting people connected with that um, and serving God in our everyday life. Um, yeah. It, it would, it wouldn't be consistent of us. Like if we didn't one, do that as an organization and mm-hmm. like two, just, provide people with those opportunities. Yeah, it, remind, it reminds me of like, I, I want to say it's Galatians too, don't quote me, I'm pretty sure it is. Um, whenever I think Paul and I forgot who he was with, uh, whenever they were getting commissioned, being sent out by the other apostles, you know, and, and the apostles, Paul, you know, in his writing talks about how they were encouraged to remember the poor. And he was like, that. that was something I was planning on doing anyways, you know, and I just um, thinking about like, kind of what Grayson said, you you want to start at a place where you're able to serve your local community, and then maybe you go to a different nation, uh, serve the people there, and when you come back, and it's just this continual cycle where, like you said, we don't want to be uh, hypocrites about this. You know, when there are, um, I've, I've heard people complain that why are Christians always going overseas when there are, <laughs> your neighbors here yep. are suffering as well. I mean, it's true. Yep. You know, so hopefully through uh, local events, you know, we're able to also meet that need for. Um, our neighbors that are a couple miles away from us, you know, um, just giving up our time to for talk sure, with people, sure. hang out, you know, be able to feed them if there are opportunities, uh, just doing different things like that. I think that's, I think that's great. Yeah. And something that I think, like, uh, like, I think just hit me with, with you mentioning Paul and Galatians was, um, the fact, uh, for Jesus, like he did travel around mm-hmm. and, and he did like serve, um, you know, the nations, but as well, he was still intentional about doing work at, at his home yeah. and, and around his local community. Yeah, he um, really did. <laughs> and so we can follow his example in that. Yeah. Um, and, and just trying to be intentional about this. Um, cause I mean, we're still we're still going to all want to do things that we enjoy, like whether it's going to football games, go to concerts, mm-hmm. It's about time with family, time at the pool, things like that. But um, but just really being intentional about um, you know, taking taking advantage of that time whenever mm-hmm. we have it to serve people, um, and being able to go from there. Yeah, I mean, I think even just you know, with the local serve events, we also have our uh, local cultural events. Um, so yep. far, we've done how many? Uh, two. Two. Yeah. We got um, hopefully our third and fourth upcoming here within the next few months. Oh, that would be fun. Uh, yeah. The first one, it was Peru, right? Yeah, Peruvian. Yep. Peruvian. And then um, the yeah, second yours. one. <laughs> yeah, mine. Uh, <laughs> when did we do that? Was that in I mean, March? that was... I think it was in March. Um, that, was, that was March, because that was like before before the China trip. So. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it was definitely March. I think, because I mentioned I was going to go back to this. This is kind of where um, I had my family. Some of my, my mom came, my, my sisters came, and some of my in-laws that came as well. Yep. And, I think there were probably like 35 people that showed up. That was a great turnout. Yeah. Um, and 
you know, my my mom's uh, she's she's a pastor. She she just started off preaching in <laughs> French, uh, so everyone was just kind of staring. I didn't know she was gonna do that, so that was that was uh, really interesting. And then uh, my siblings just really start talking about the culture and some of the differences uh, in terms of how things are over there and how they've noticed things are over here. Mm-hmm. And I know something that really stood out to me um, when my sister talked about how much. It is very culturally motivated. Things are, um, it's about, not culture, it's about family, yeah. you know. Um, so in Congo, but there's really about family. You know, we might not have all the resources that we have here, might not have all the opportunities that we have here, but, uh, for example, my sister gave the uh, an example of where she'll remember when she was younger, my mom would cook a lot of food, but she's like, are we having a party? Why? Why? <laughs> Why are we making all this food? But then you see all of our neighbors would just come and and they'll get food to eat. Yeah, you know, and that's just kind of the environment um, that people in Congo a lot of times grow up in because it's just really family oriented, really relational. Um, you have uncles that are always around. Uh, you might not want them around, but they're yeah. always around. Um, <laughs> I, think, you, I think in every country, everyone has. Yeah, that. yeah. yeah. <laughs> they don't want around. <laughs> it's always around. Uh, yeah, no, I mean, so just little things like that. Um, I think I had a lot of friends. Um, I mean, so thank you guys for hosting us. Yeah, of first course. of all, thanks, Chase. Well, it's crazy um, because I mean, I, I could tell your uh, your. Uh, was it your mom and your sister yeah. that made the food? I could tell that they yeah. were they were used to making food for a lot of people because oh, yeah. yeah. they whipped up food for forty people like <laughs> it was really nothing. Did. Yeah, <laughs> she really did. And I, and I had so many of my friends just message me afterwards, and they were just so grateful for the opportunity. Yeah, I didn't really know what to expect, the kind of feedback I would get from that, but mm-hmm. uh, they were just so grateful to be able to learn from a different culture. Yeah, because um, I, I think originally when when. Uh, we were talking, my siblings were talking, and does anyone have any questions? Originally, not a lot of people <laughs> were responding, but as the night went on, nobody wanted to leave. Yeah. You know, it seemed like questions were just coming uh, left and right, left and right, exactly. left and right. So that was that was really cool to see, you know. Yeah. Um, and, and, yeah, being able to interact with that was awesome. And, um, and yeah, I know something that, that we definitely feel is um, we definitely, like, we know that not everyone can go – on, on a like on a mission trip um in terms of like money or time or things like that um and often time like oftentimes the only way that people can experience other cultures is when they do travel and so us really being intentional about trying to create those different yeah. cultural atmospheres here mm-hmm. yeah um it would it'll really be able to create a like a wider wider effect right um that can happen um, and, and it won't, our, our programs and what, and what we're trying to do won't be to such like a, a niche market. Mm. Um, and so it's been really cool to be able to see like the, the feedback from, from those type of events. Um, and especially like the, like the Congo, Congolese event, because I mean, we've been friends for, you know, a number of years now. Yeah. And like I, I never met your parents. Like, <laughs> yeah, a lot I, of people were saying that. Yeah, <laughs> I, I, I never met. I don't think I'd met any of your siblings no, yet. No, definitely not. Yeah. And so being able to meet all them was awesome. Um, but then as well, like, uh, like I don't even think we had really talked about very much of like what life was like in the culture there. And yeah. so being able to have an opportunity after all these years to to learn um, and go from there was awesome. Um, and uh, I'm really looking forward to, to all of the dinners and events that we're going to be having in the future. Yeah. Um, and just giving friends, like, an opportunity to, like, celebrate their culture. Um, yeah. Especially friends that we've had, um, you know, years of friendship with. Um, it, it, it'll be really awesome to, to continue to give people an opportunity to celebrate their culture. Right. And just kind of go from there. Yeah. Yeah, I think even, like, um, I actually went to a wedding couple weeks ago, I, w- I was I was like an MC, you know, just talking out the mic, you know, trying to get people going and all yeah. that fun stuff. And my friend, the one that got married, the bride, um, she, their origins from New Orleans. Yeah. And during the wedding, um, there's this thing called the first line and the second line. Okay. I've never heard of it in my <laughs> life. I just remember at one point, I was speaking to one of her family members and, yeah. and he was like, when is, when, is, when is that part coming on? When is it coming on? I'm like, I have no idea what's going <laughs> no, on. I don't even know what it is. Yeah, I don't even know what it is. I have and no then, idea what you're talking about. Yeah, man. her dad comes <laughs> up. was like, I think it's time. I was like, all right. So I played the music. 
and everybody gets up. Uh, so the bride and the groom, they had umbrellas, and everyone else, they had tissues. And they literally just walked around the whole room <laughs> dancing. Oh, wow. And, yeah. and that's like the first line, second line. And there's some cultural things you can learn from that. And I'm just thinking, wow, this is New Orleans. That's the state right next to us. Because you imagine somebody in a completely different country. So, yeah. so you really yeah. see the importance of uh, being able to have you know, these dinners where you're able to learn these different things. Um, and then one of our other programs, uh, what you're doing right now is a podcast. Yeah. I think the podcast is such a great way to, um, you know, hear the voices, you know, exactly. I'll be able to hear the voices of kind of share the different things that we're already doing and yeah. things that are up to come, yeah. right? things yeah. that are going to come. Yeah. And something that like a friend said today at lunch uh, that Rachel said that I, I hadn't even thought of was, um, you know, people have different ways of like taking in the information. information. Yeah. And so people... I feel like progressively, like just more and more, are are listening to audiobooks and podcasts and things like that. And so, us being able to talk through, you know, who we are as an organization, mm-hmm. um, you know, our experiences traveling, being able to bring on guests right. to talk about their experiences and and talking about different topics um, is something that I think um, a lot of people will enjoy. Um, because not everyone wants to to read like a <laughs> I hear that. Web, so it's not going to want to read a blog post. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And so just cre- having another like creative outlet for that yeah. is great. Um, and I think for us as well, just being able to not be, or I should say, not feel like we're um, boxed into like a particular um, type of creative outlet, whether right. it's blogs yeah. or whether it's um, purely just having like meetings with people, but. Um, but really being able to let, um, let our thoughts, let our, um, you know, um, hopefully, um, humble ambitions, um, be able to just come out in this because one of my favorite music artists, his name's Andy Minio. Um, he, he said a quote on a recent podcast that he had that, uh, creativity is like an outlet mm. and we can't keep it like, let it be bottled up. You have to let it just continue to flow so that more will come. And so, being able f- for us to have these different creative outlets, whether it's meetings with people, whether it's this podcast, whether it's um, the blogs that we're going to be starting up here in a little bit, right. mm-hmm. um, is something that um, just helps us to grow as people. Um, and and as well, even in that, being able to have like the like conversation, right? Um, because it's something where, uh, and, and y'all and y'all can say if y'all agree with this, but I think. In conversation, there's there's a way to like progressively have a like a further understanding of truth, right? Mm-hmm. Um, as you talk sure. through like different issues, um, being able to explore all these different ideas, um, without there being any sort of like hindrances or anything yeah. like that, and so like this can be a platform for us, um, like whenever decisions come up for us as an organization mm-hmm. on trips or structures of trips or different things like that. Being able to to bring out these microphones um, and being able to to talk about like our decisions and just laying out the ideas and being able to talk through them, pray through them, discern through them, um, and as well just conversations with other people, being able to learn from their perspectives, um, being able to to grow from that is going to be great. Um, and so it, I, I, yeah, I'm really excited to see like what's going to come from the podcast specifically. Yeah, and I think just knowing also it's not just going to be us. You know, we'll have uh, different people come along, uh, different backgrounds, different experiences. So I think that makes it even more rich for everybody that's able to listen because mm-hmm. nowadays the common question is always, what are you reading? What are you listening to, right? Yeah. You get on Facebook, hey, what should I listen? What should I watch? Yep. You know, so people yeah. have different ways of taking information. So I think podcasts are such an easy way. You know, you're just driving, put one on and listen and uh, get information. So, exactly. yeah. So, so if you're listening to this while you're driving down the road right now, you're the you're the real MVP. Yeah, there it goes. <laughs> real MVP. <laughs> you're being very practical right now. So exactly. Yeah, and we also have our online creative content that we wanted to yeah. share as well. Yeah, um, and and kind of the two main parts of that, which which Grayson and and I'd say John would be in charge of one of them, um, is like the photo gallery that we're gonna try to have, um, really allowing people who are gifted in like videography and photography. To, to take advantage of those skills um, and serve God in, in that way while they're on trips and then being able to like post that to the website and things like that. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, like I said, 
we all go different places all the time. And yeah. so, uh, like I said, one of the, the cool things about that is just being able to share that through photos. Cause you know, just by sharing photos, you can, you know, you can change someone's life just by sharing a photo, yeah, right. you know, it's uh, and really just, you know, if someone sees a photo of you helping out or doing some things that might light a fire in someone else's say oh hey i want to go do that you know Mm -hmm. i want to go help serve i want to go travel i want to go serve at you know a local event here in my community um so that's so that's another big component to the creative avenue is just being able to share those experiences that we are having with others and so that they can kind of what they say a a picture's worth a thousand words yeah exactly Exactly. Exactly. like there's been so many times that's come up um where like a like just one picture has resulted in like, like a whole like movement within, oh, yeah. within our country. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, whether it was with like Syrian refugees, um, whether it's been um, with with things happening over in China or different areas, like it's been it's it's been great to have that as like a as an outlet. Um, and then as well, like with um, I'd say kind of the last main like creative outlet that we're gonna be have that we're gonna have is uh, like our blog. Um, really yeah. giving people who uh, go on our trips an opportunity to uh, share their like testimonies, their stories through writing, because right. some some people love to do writing. Yeah, and so um, as well, like there's something, there really is something to writing in a like autobiographical format. Right. Um, something where you're able to sort through and like reflect on all of these experiences that you've been through. Um, to being able to draw out like the lessons that that you learned through that, um, to be able to sort through like tough experiences or, or mm-hmm. really great experiences, right. um, and as well being able to I think I mean learn like continue to learn who you are because yeah. like your personality, who you are is, is is almost always changing as a result of the experiences that you have and so. Being able to sit there and and reflect um, is is something that's uh, invaluable, and and being able to see like where God's hand was through that whole time mm-hmm. is something that you can just um, draw confidence on like going towards the future. But but yeah, I'm excited like the blogs, like the photo gallery and and the podcast. Like really excited to see just kind of what what's going to come from that and just like the everything that like the creativity from that will kind of stem from and so yeah but i I would say like as far as like as far as like this podcast content goes like Mm -hmm. this is like each of our first times ever (laughs) ever ever doing a podcast so interesting (laughs) and so um yeah so we'll just kind of see like just what god does with it um and and just kind of how this goes and and i'm just excited to to see like how the organization grows because i know like our main intention behind this is to really use this as a platform to 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 allow people to share their stories and to allow us to kind of talk through the issues that are facing our organization not and, and rather than like trying to gain like a huge following or anything like that yeah because i think if we were trying to do it for that like there would be some sort of like pressure involved or anything like that but mm-hmm. with it being you know those other intentions like we can go through it that way you know and i think um just <laughs> with the whole just um you know blogs for example yeah i know personally i just i would rather just listen than read but mm-hmm. giving people two options is you know better than having no options so i think exactly. that's great that we're doing that and to the whole uh, pictures um was it, how's the saying go <laughs> i can't remember anything right now <laughs> uh picture pictures worth a thousand words. there it goes <laughs> pictures worth a thousand words there's there's some group I mean, there's an Instagram page. I can't remember what it is. Is it People of New York or something? Yeah. And yeah, that was crazy. I actually, <clears throat> he came down, that guy, he actually came down to Austin and I went to one of his uh, showings yeah. where he was talked about his book and him, you know, t- how he takes the time to sit down and how it kind of all started in New York. And he would just go, he started kind of, you know, seeing homeless people and he would go talk to them. And right. then he would just go talk with random people. And like, that, I thought that was really cool. I, I, I bought his book and that was really cool to get to experience that and see it firsthand and just you know get to read his book and just you know you there's people from 
all different ways of life. Everyone has a different story than the other person yeah. that are next to him. Um, it's always, uh, and that was really cool to be able to see that. And I think that's one of the cool things that, you know, through partnering with us and us partnering with other people is that, yeah. you know, we, everyone, everyone has their own experiences and it's a really cool that we get to help create those experiences yeah. for people to kind of have a new idea or new perspective of what's, uh, what's out there and exactly. what's going on. And yeah, or like allow those, uh, project, per, the, the perspective <laughs> changing experiences. It's all good, man. You'd yeah. think I'd learn how to say that word yeah. after so many times. <laughs> um, yeah, perspective changing experiences. Um, but as well, um, being able to provide these people like with, with great memories. Mm -hmm. Um, there's a, it's funny on our, on our way down here, um, today, uh, we were listening to some music by John Bellion, which I love that dude's music, but he has a quote in one of his songs. It's something along the lines of, uh, like conversations with the devil and he's telling me what's the point of making memories, uh, when I won't even remember when I'm 70 mm -hmm. and then follows that up with conversations with my dad and he's telling me there's a point to making memories because they'll be even better when we're heavenly mm. and i was mm. just <laughs> yeah the first time i heard that i like i was floored because i like i, I was because i think like the first time i heard that um i just come back from a trip to uh new orleans with my dad and um and i was kind of sitting there feeling a little guilty about going on the trip rather than like doing some service opportunities that were presented to me that weekend right? and listened to that song and had conversations with like my dad throughout the trip of, you know, this is a great experience. It was awesome. Um, and, and just as much as God can do work in, in our lives through like service experiences, he, he can just as much through like great memories and great experiences right. because, you know, he blesses us with those. And, and the thing is, is like, I feel so t like sometimes people are ashamed of like these great experiences that they're given mm -hmm. to where it's like they almost feel guilty that they should be serving all the time or that they shouldn't be partaking in these great experiences. But mm -hmm. I don't know, man. Like I think like the only way that you could come to that conclusion is, is if it stems from like a false sense of how that opportunity was given to you. Mm -hmm. Because... If, if you view everything as, you know, God gave me this and I'm grateful for this, like there won't ever be any guilt towards that. There, yeah. there, there can be some passion towards other people that are as a result mm -hmm. and that highlight and that motivate you towards the future, but not something that ever makes you look negatively towards that experience. Right. But the only time you could ever get towards that is if you're sitting there thinking, Oh, I I somehow earned this, but I know that I'm sinful and and that I don't deserve this. And so yeah. there's that tension that's there. And so yeah, just being willing to if, like if God gives you the ability to partake in a great experience, like being able to do that. And so it's been it's been really great to to have those types of um, like memories with my dad and and just great trips, um, which I'm sure y'all have all had like amazing trips like that. So. Yeah, no, trips, uh, <laughs> memories, ah. yeah, memories is, um, I, I heard a quote, I think, I think we talked about it as well, uh, from Dr. Miles Monroe talking about how, you know, God, <clears throat> you know, he wants us to enjoy our memories, you know, mm -hmm. kind of like you said, and not feeling guilty um, about the things, some of the experiences that we may get, but um, so yeah, we just wanted to share some of the purposes and and goals for for this podcast and just really go over some of the programs that we have yeah um just so that we're able to kind of see um just so we're able to kind of see um so you guys are able to understand it more hear it more and just hopefully you know hopefully that answers some of the questions um yeah, yeah. and so yeah i think that's like all that we wanted to to cover for today um are there any other like thoughts that y'all had related to those topics or you think that's good uh i mean i think that yeah. about all that i have <laughs> yeah yeah i think same with me so um so that sounds good um we do have some some cool episodes uh upcoming um like i know one with with grayson uh he's uh got a trip coming up to to europe and so he'll be able to share um, just a little bit about that and like what that trip was like. 
um, and some of the things he learned through the trip. Um, as well, we got one coming up with uh, one of Josh Way's uh, buddies. But yeah, so thank you all so much uh, just for tuning in. Um, we hope you enjoyed uh, just the conversation um, and your perspective somehow grew from you know, our, our discussion, our conversation. Um, if you have any thoughts on, on anything, definitely um, just hit us up. Um, le- also, like, if there's a, anything that y'all want to hear about or if y'all have true. questions about you know, stuff that we've done or things that are coming up, uh, just feel free to send us an email and you know, maybe we can address it and talk about it on the next podcast. True, yeah. We're always down to, to talk about any sort of conversation or any sort of topics. And so, yeah, definitely just send us an email. Um, it'd be info at perspectivesww.org. Um, or you could just go to our website, perspectivesworldwide.org, um, and our email address is there. But, yeah, if you have any thoughts, definitely feel free to leave a comment uh, down below. Um, we're, learn- we're here to, you know, just learn, you know, continue to get better, continue to grow our perspectives, and, you know, your comments, your feedback allows for that. Um, and, yeah, all of our social media will be linked uh, down below. Um, go give us a like on Facebook or a follow on IG. Um, but, yeah, it'd be just greatly appreciated. So that's it for today. Um, we'd encourage y'all to just go love people, go change your perspective. So thank y'all. Much love.